cards for each of the Vargas. Oh, okay. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so, so it's like for every divisional chart also it is there. Yes, but what it looks like is I don't think the card spread itself changes. I think that just the planets, or the arrangement of planets changes. He has not taught this screen yet, and I don't know necessarily how to work with it yet, but um, that's where the divisional chart aspect would come into play. Okay, and uh, how, how do you see transits of planets or some, something of that sort? I mean, apart from this yearly progression, which you said, or is it the way that happens? But that will be specific to charts, right? The progression. Actually, um, I think, I'm not sure how the transits themselves are actually shown through just like the the card spread itself. I think these are just progressions, but they're in every single Cards of Truth software and in Kala software, Ernst has included a transit screen. So whenever I'm doing a reading for someone, I'll like, if I want to, I'll look at the transits and then I'll kind of use that as an additional layer to help have some confluence with what I'm saying. So if I'm seeing like, oh wow, like I really don't think you're gonna get into a relationship in the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. And I keep seeing it over and over and over again. And I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna look at your transits. And then I see K2 crossing the seventh cusp. <laughs> and then oh. I see, you know, like some, I see they're in Sade Sati or whatever. It's like, okay, well obviously you're definitely not going to get into relationship. Like there's just too many things happening, working against you. So it's like, you can kind of be more like, I'm 99% sure you're going to meet someone. I'm 99% sure like things are just going to fall apart. So you just, it's usually I use transits separately as an additional layer because I'm kind of looking at these and I'm like, yeah, Jupiter is in Scorpio tropically, but Saturn isn't still in Sagittarius. So I don't think that these are um, transits. I think these are progressions. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, do you also do this compatibility matching and all this with this? Yes, definitely. Oh. Um, Ernst has developed a compatibility software module that he will be putting into the Cards of Truth, and I've already been trying it out, and it's amazing, and it will probably be in the next update of the Cards of Truth. I cannot give a sneak peek of it because he hasn't put it out yet, but it's amazing, and... I think people will be really excited to use it because Cards of Truth compatibility is crazy accurate. Okay. And I think uh, there's one video in your channel related to this or I don't know, some other video I had seen that how do you find the letter of the spouse or something or those things are also possible. Is it the same system or how is it like? Yeah. So... My friend and colleague Ganesh Jayakumar came onto my channel and he was showing how to like predict the spouse using the cards of truth. And I believe that we also used astrology for that video. We made it a long time ago, so I can't remember. Okay. But um, it's the same system basically. Yeah. And he and I definitely for over the past year have been using the, excuse me, the cards of truth in tandem with astrology. Oh, okay. To, um, just to give us like an extra layer of confluence. So you can definitely apply some of the techniques you're using in astrology into the card system. Like I use the cards, I use the cards of true system as Prajna as well. Oh, okay. Um, so there's like so much you can do with it. And no one ever taught me how to do that. I just do that. I will be teaching how to do that soon, but it's um, like... It's just another way of reading things. And to me, it's most closely related to omens, which is funny because the last time I came onto your channel, we talked about mm -hmm. omens. Okay. And uh, another thing I want to ask is, suppose you have the birth chart astrologically that is saying something. And does it always happen that this is also saying the exact same thing or exact, I mean, not 100%, but Sometimes do you see conflicting things? For, for example, suppose in his case, like you have seen these, these placements and something similar can be seen in the horoscope also. Maybe, I don't know, but do you see that or how, if there's a contradiction or something like that, how do you deal with it? Um, I haven't really seen contradiction necessarily. Mm -hmm. And 
I think that's because like, if you look at here, I wanted to show you this earlier, but look at all these planets here in the Venus card. We have K2, Venus, Mercury, Moon, and Sun all in the Venus card. And if you look at his actual birth chart, what are the signs ruled by Venus? They are Taurus. Okay. And they are Libra. Wow. So any planets falling in Taurus and Libra will be in the Venus card. So we have Ooh. Venus, Moon, Sun, Mercury, and K2 in the Venus card of Le or in the sign of Libra, which will end up being the Venus card. So whenever you have planets in the sign of a planet which would be like for instance we have mars rahu and uranus in okay. the aries. signs of mars aries okay. and scorpio so uh -huh. then when we come to the cards of the truth this is where they're all going to fall so this makes it really hard for there not to be confluence between the two systems because literally part of this system is superimposed chart onto the cards Oh, okay. So you're basically taking those placements and you're superimposing them. So that's quite interesting because this teaches you a lot about the masculine and feminine polarities of the signs, right? So Libra is the male sign of Venus and Taurus is the female sign. So now you're kind of examining them as one. Okay. Isn't that cool? Oh, okay. Because it's the same planet. So it's extremely hard for their to not be confluence because you're superimposing pretty much exactly what the chart is saying onto the card spread. And the other thing you're superimposing is if we go and we look again at the main screen, the 12th cusp is in Venus's sign of Libra. Okay. And the seventh cusp is in Venus's sign of Taurus. Mm -hmm. So when we go to our cards of truth screen, we have the seventh and the twelfth cusp there. So okay. now I'm basically reading these energies in direct relation to each other. Yeah, and one more thing I wanted to ask is suppose the Dasha and Transit is saying something and then the progression is kind of a bit uh, different. So then how do you reach the conclusion? That is so confusing. I know exactly what you mean, but... One thing that I've learned by working with clients for a long time and not just studying astrology, because like when you're studying astrology or the cards, like it's really easy. You're like, okay, this is supposed to say this and it does say this. Like it's just kind of like do, 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 do. But when you're actually, when you actually have a client in front of you and you're speaking to someone and you're listening to them and I do a lot of coaching. So it's like, I've worked with clients where I've heard them talk for hours and hours and hours, you know, it's like, because I've spent a session every week with them, you realize just how complex people are. Oh. Like people are so complex. So you might see like, oh, there's a breakup, but then there's also them meeting someone, but then there's also a breakup. And it's like, well, that person could have broken up with someone and fallen in love at the same time. And that Ooh. sucks because that's like painful. But as you really get good with working with clients and understanding like the nuances, you realize like, most of the time it's all true because people are really complicated. So people can be like, they could get their dream job, but still be hating life, you know? Oh, okay. So usually the cards are going to more so show like um, these different nuances that people feel like, you know, it's really interesting because one of the cards that I always see for moving is the eight of hearts. Change of and residence, you mean? Yeah, and I've never had, sorry, my hair's all crazy, but I had to take it down. Um, I've never read in a book, I've never studied or learned from anyone that the Eight of Hearts is related to moving, ever. Like, it's always this card of, like, needing to become stronger internally, even though things externally have changed. But it's both things, because when you move you usually go through a process of needing to become stronger internally because your external world has changed. And if you look at the eight of hearts, um, which I wish I had it just right here. I don't have it right. Oh, right here. If you look at the eight of hearts, it's a four of hearts mm -hmm. and another four of hearts. And the four uh -huh. of hearts is a card of home. Oh, okay. So it's like leaving one home Oh. For another home, it's two okay. homes and it's that process. So, you know, 
you'll see someone with an eight of hearts and you'll be like, well, they're not moving, you know, but then the transits will be like, they're moving. So then really what ends up happening is you learn something new about the cards. Okay. So the transits are teaching. So it's like either you learn from the client, there's like people are nuanced and people don't make sense. I know I personally don't make sense. There's so many things in my life where I'm like, like how can a person love rats and mice and love snakes? Like snakes eat rats. You know, it's like people are like, you need to choose one or the other. And it's like, no, like I love all animals, right? It's how's, like, your, how's your snake, by the way? <laughs> he's good. I'm traveling right now. And his, the owner that gave him to me um, just said that he'll keep him while I'm traveling and then I get him back. So I really like miss him a lot, but okay. I can't bring him traveling with me. Snakes are very sensitive and they don't like change. So oh, okay. he's back in the same place that he's lived for 10 years. And then I'm going to pick him up and probably spoil him and give him a brand new setup and <laughs> feed him way too much. I'm just kidding. I was thinking if the snake is there, we could have seen in the video. <laughs> no, but my mom wants me to adopt a sugar glider. Do you know what a sugar glider is? No. It's like a little like crazy um, squirrel sort of thing. And I'm like trying to figure out if I can get a sugar glider and have a snake if I keep them on opposite ends of my house. So okay. if anyone in the comments below wants to let me know if that's a terrible idea or not. Right now I kind of think it is, but... So anyways, people are either nuanced or we are just kind of uncovering more information about the cards of truth. So I use astrology to help me learn more about the card system. So now when I teach the cards of truth, I'm not going to hesitate to explain to people, okay, the eight of hearts could relate to moving. And this is why. And I've seen that. I've seen the eight of hearts card come up for moving for the past eight months. It hasn't changed. It just always comes up for people when they're moving. So now I'm like, okay, this is a card of moving. I don't know why no one's really posted this anywhere yet that I've seen. So you just kind of learn more as you go. I'm an empirical, observational type of astrologer, card reader. Does that Fantastic. make sense? I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> you have to learn, you know. I think that it's like, why do people only trust those that came before them? Aren't we supposed to be evolving and becoming smarter? Yes, yes. And taking things further, like... If I just lived the life that my parents wanted me to live, I would probably be pretty depressed and sad, you know? I would have never done half the cool things that I do now. Okay, yes, yes. I love so we, that. We must evolve beyond the wisdom that came before us. Or maybe I'm just one of those people that needs to. <laughs> and other people need to, like, preserve the wisdom of ages past. Because we need preservers. No, fantastic. This is, I'm totally impressed. I never knew there's a system like this also. <laughs> Isn't it fun? Yeah. I mean, and uh, one last question. What are all these different, I mean, th these are also the same day and those progression only, right? Week progression, day progression. So this okay, is... the view the, was different. Okay. Yeah. So this is the year progression. Then we zoom in further to the week. Then we zoom in further to the day. So what I do is I always check my week progression and my day progression and I make predictions for myself. So oh. I was moving out of my apartment last week and I wanted to see how my moving day was going to go. <laughs> and so I looked at it and I was like, I was so mad. I was like, it's gonna, there's going to be delays. Things aren't going to work out the way that I want. And I was like, okay, well, at least I can be prepared. So then... Yeah. Oh, that's okay. So then when I woke up that morning, um, so then when I woke up that morning, my cousin was supposed to be there at 9 a.m. He okay. texted me at 10 minutes to 9 a.m. and said, I just woke up. I'll be there in two hours. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, there's delay number one. And then I went to go pick up my moving truck and the truck that I needed was completely parked in from every single side. Oh. So then they gave me a new truck. And so I had to do a 20 minute visual inspection where you take pictures of all the damage that's already on the car. You write down every single damage that's already on the car so that they don't think that you did it. So half an hour later, I get my new car. I'm about to take off with it. And I said, why does it say on the contract that there are um, only 500 miles on it when this truck has 4,000 miles on it? <laughs> 
because they're going to charge me oh. for those miles. And he said, oh, we're in the wrong car. We're going to have to get you a new car. We're going to have to do the inspection all over again. Okay. So it was like this massive delay, right? And I already knew that I was going to be delayed because I looked at my card. So I couldn't really be that mad because I knew it was going to happen. But the cards easily predicted, okay, it's going to be kind of a stressful day. Okay. Just be ready for it. Fantastic. And now the one thing that I haven't described to people, which is the most exciting, is that everyone has a birth card, right? So let's pretend that I was best friends with K.N. Rao. And my birth card was the two of spades. So this is his day progression right here. And it's May 1st where I am. So he has a 10 of hearts day, which is a card of like real emotional fulfillment and all of that. And the three of spades card is activated because the ecliptic cusp is there. So the three of spades is kind of this card of like, um, doing something it's like being independent and doing something on your own so he could find some kind of emotional fulfillment that day but also there could be something where he needs to like kind of do his own thing right um so in all that energy of today that feeling good he might find out that his best friend nicole is going to be calling him between 3 24 p.m and 8 50 p.m oh so during this window Okay. I believe I'm reading that right. No, I'm not reading that right. Between 5.24 p.m. and 8.50 p.m., I could be giving him a call on the phone. Oh. Right? Or communicating with him in some way. It's a Mercury card, so it's communication. It would be better if the third cusp was there. But he might find that there's something to do with me that comes up, something emotional to do with me that comes up, or friendly that, to do with me that comes up during that time. And maybe it could have to do with real estate or um, it's – the four of diamonds sometimes does, deals with real estate, but the fifth and 12th house are there. So maybe it could deal with um, some kind of a skill set related to spirituality and me oh. coming in during that time window. So for instance, I've had people from the past where I've looked at my card spread for that day and I said, oh, their card spread's showing up like really strongly for me on Thursday. Then I go look at their card spread and I see my card showing up really strongly for them on Thursday. I have no plans to talk to this person. I have no reason to talk to this person. And then randomly out of the blue, I'm forced to contact them on Thursday about, you know, their mail arrives at my house. Like I, I get the wrong mail or um, someone needs me to ask them a question. So it's like, oh. you can predict who you will deal with at certain times based off of the card spread. Fantastic. <laughs> so I will be teaching how to do that more in depth. If anyone's interested in learning the cards, I will be making some um, cards of truth courses that people can just, that won't be, I'm doing an in-person one, but it completely sold out. So I can't accept any more people, but have them just kind of follow my YouTube channel and subscribe to my newsletter. And I will post when I'm selling individual courses. Fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> Does this make sense? I hope I hope I didn't overwhelm you. No, I mean, uh, I already knew that I will not much understand what's going on, but I understand how the structure is flowing. I may not understand the details of what the cards and the names, but I have yeah. totally understood the flow and how you are relating it with uh, astrology and planets and <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, I try to keep it as basic as possible, but then yeah. you asked a lot of like detailed questions, so we got more into the details. But um, yeah, really, I thought this will be like okay, the chart is there, everything is there, it's all there with you, but you will just confirm what you see in the chart using this also. But I didn't know this was like a whole new. <laughs> I thought this was just like another addition to just confirm what you see in the chat. I mean, you can always do that, but this is also a lot much more, much, much more than just confirming. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty intense. And honestly, like, I feel like I went really quickly through those examples because I didn't, I didn't really study the charts beforehand or anything like that, which these charts would take some study to really delineate everything and look at, like, I do look at like, the strength of the planets. And I do look at the astrology of things um, before I read a chart because I want to see, okay, is this planet combust? Is this planet 
exalted. So I do a little bit more where I could have maybe explained more in depth, like why Kane Rao is like at the top of his game or not. But um, so I want you guys to know that this isn't like a system that you're like good to go right out of the box. It does take patience. Uh. It does take working with it. I'm just trying to answer questions on the fly to the best of my ability. And um, you answered those perfectly 10 on 10. <laughs> Good. And also, I know the sun is in my eyes, but you guys, I hope you enjoy this beautiful yeah, river. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying everything. <laughs> and my eagle shirt. There's so many eagles over here. It's oh, cool. is it? Oh, nice, nice. Nice. Thank yeah. you very much for, my God, so long it has been. <laughs> I know. And you're going to be coming onto my channel soon too. So yes. I'm really excited for that. So hopefully later this week or next week even. Yeah, we can Whatever. we can do do we can see it next week only. Okay, perfect. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, once you're again. welcome. Anything yes. else you want to say? Well, like I said, the Cards of Truth course is sold out. So if you've been hearing about that, um, just hang in there. I'll do it again, and sign up for my newsletter for updates about any um, a la carte course options that I'll have in the meantime. I offer the Cards of Truth reading which will take you through your birth card spread all of your potentials um, and you'll actually be able to ask me questions where i'll cast cards in the moment i've been casting cards for almost 18 years so i really love to do it uh, then i offer the cards of truth tour so during the tour you give me five birth dates of people that are in your life as well as uh, 10 dates of things that have happened in your life so like if you got married if you were in a car accident anything kind of important and different and i'll take you through your card spread and the whole software for an hour and show you okay this is why this happened on this date so you can kind of see the magic of the cards of truth in your life and see how it unfolds and i definitely recommend it if you're considering studying the cards or buying one of my courses or something like that so you can see like that it actually works it's and it's really fun it's a good tutoring session to get that i offer but i also offer tarot and astrology and life coaching I'm looking for more li long-term life coaching clients right now because a few spots opened up. So okay. there's that too. And I use the cards in my life coaching and Vedic astrology. Okay, okay. Nice. So whoever is watching this, if you <laughs> want to know which card is showing up where, <laughs> yes. please go to her website, our YouTube channel or comment there or do whatever you want or you can comment here also. And you can approach yeah. her for the consultation. It will be very nice, fantastic. <laughs> and so subscribe to Babajit's channel. Everyone subscribe to Babajit's channel. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's a great channel with wonderful contents. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we'll have you back again, maybe with this topic, extension of this or some other topic. We will decide what we should let you speak <laughs> or maybe you can also tell that you want to share this the screen is always yours okay yes maybe i can prepare something for next time we just kind of spontaneously did this but it was fun it was fun to hang out with you and to talk about the cards no yes yes thank you very much i loved it i'm very sure whoever sees this they will be amazed thank <laughs> you very much namaste namaste have a wonderful day yeah same too